see what we can do. I think we're on air when it comes. it not showing up Okay, let's go down to sound all about. Okay. Arr. So, um, I hope this is showing up and I hope the audio is coming through. Hey, Serato Fig. Good evening. Because um, for some reason it's not showing up in my uh, browser here in the stream thing, but I presume it's streaming to you guys. Um, so what we're trying to do is track down hey, def, um, problems with the SID audio output on the Mega 65. Now this is a little bit complicated and fiddly uh, to do. The ideal would be that we can record the audio uh, directly and compare it in the digital domain. So I'm not sure if you've seen those uh, YouTube videos where you can see the uh, the SID voices and it's showing the waveform that it's outputting. Um, that would be perfect for us to have um, to see what's going on. Um, but we don't. <laughs> and the hardware I've got here, so that in theory the streaming box can record audio, but actually the way that we get the Mega 65 audio in huh, might this actually be good to, to test it actually because it's all right so that's input four i can turn the microphone on on input four and i can tell one of the many great things that's been improved in mega 65 basic is it's now really easy to play tunes with sensible notes so we can do a loop octave two um a through g so of course a b a and B are high, and the, thing, the octave really starts at C, if I remember correctly. Um, so I can hear that through the analog fold back. Hey, Ludon. Great to see you there as well. Um, now, camera four. So that's... that one I'm just trying to have a look and see where the um, audio is getting there from that so that's on HDMI um, and so that should carry digital audio from the mega 65 out and I can see something there but it's really low level let me just we can try bringing it up no nope, i can't see anything on there so for whatever reason we seemingly don't have audio from that one hmm now um Targus is saying, just wait if the audio issue could be resolved by using Wavelab Pro from Steinberg. See in Discord. Um, 
Yes. <laughs> Luton's just said, Zer Altus Rom. Um, talking about the uh, the Mega 65 ROM that I've got on here. And yes, I, I haven't updated it for a while. Um, but that doesn't affect the SID. Um, so we need to have a way to get the audio to get a decent digital recording. Now, I wonder, hmm, might actually be able to mess with where I get the audio feed that currently is playing the music from Radio Parallax for you guys, right? Um, which I think actually is really, really quiet at the moment, isn't it? Um, let's make sure that that input's still working. You should be able to hear Radio Parallax now. Um, so what I can do, <laughs> hey LGB, great to see you as well, this is in the comments written, 10 print, hello world, semicolon, colon, go to 10. Um, so yes, endless greets from LGB. So I'm going to unplug Radio Parallax for a moment. Um, Right, so I can hear that here now because I've unplugged the audio jack. So what I'm missing here with this is the 3.5mm audio jack that goes from the um, support laptop when I'm doing the streaming. And I'm going to try and plug that into the headphone jack on the external speakers that I have here. And it looks like I can actually get decent line levels. If I turn this on, you should now be able to hear the endless loop of the um, uh, the notes from the SID. So if someone can confirm that for me, that would be fabulous. Yeah, LGB saying, missed the live streams here lately. Yeah, I've, um, I've been missing doing it as well. So it's been a, a bit of a, a busy patch. We've kind of got some family stuff going on. Okay, so the good thing is, so that gives us a path where you guys can actually get the digital audio, um, possibly easier than I can do it. Um, and if anyone has got any tools for making those kind of nice breakdowns, I guess the challenge is that we want to be able to look at those three inputs so that the other thing I'll try and do I don't know whether I can point the other camera I've got here at the um, at the oscilloscope and have it actually be visible it looks like Let me turn that light off no that's even worse because it's too bright you know, my oscilloscope screen doesn't have good enough contrast ratio at the angle that the, the camera's mounted there. Um, you know, it puts you out of misery from listening to endless notes there for a minute. Um, so I guess the other question is whether I can do this in reverse, because if the audio levels are okay on that for line input, because I can tweak the volume on, so if I show you again, so you can see the oscilloscope there, but down here, there's a crappy old set of PC speakers. This is actually plugged into the three and a half mil jack on the Mega 65. And then I've just plugged in three and a half mil line on that. So if I plug the other end of that, not into the streaming box, but if I plug that into the microphone jack, oh, my cables are all trying to not reach. On here, and let's see what Audacity does for us. We can get display from this computer up here so you guys can see what's going on. Uh, let me just rearrange some windows here. As in 
true it's a computer fashion it's decided to put my email up on the uh, streaming box display rather than for example audacity okay so now we have audacity there now we have to work out which device it is uh, it should be that one I think so we'll set the thing playing again and there's a waveform that's good let's go stop and try and zoom it in uh, now what else are people having to say there uh, Targus is saying wavelab audio file comparator using generate delta file may help identify the differences okay um, is that a thing that can run under Linux um, and otherwise let me how do I zoomy 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 now we are going to see analog effects on this because <laughs> this is a horrible 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 uh, audio path so I don't know whether it's going to be good enough to compare so we can see the kind of this typical SID waveforms of it uh, dropping down suddenly and then climbing up um, and then this is the new notes coming through presumably and we could work out what the true frequency that is um yeah Tucker's is saying so it's yeah windows and mac os so that's going to be a bit of a difficulty here because i'm on linux um can i how do i scroll these jolly things so i don't use audacity very often if anyone can tell me straight off the top of their head how i can pan the um The audio stream across that would be <laughs> fabulous um, hmm but what we'll do in the meantime we'll get the hopefully you guys can hear radio parallax come through again Lighten says scroll up the bottom yes that would be it <laughs> Yes. Okay, yeah, so we're seeing a note come through and it goes for half a second with decay because then it's from 0.1 something to 0.61 something. And we can see that the frequency of these is different each time I think they'll be a little bit different now the thing that worries me a little bit is this shape doesn't look much like here so this is what I would expect from a clean digital pickup of the um, the SID um, so my gut feeling is it's not going to be clean enough for us to really compare um, doing a raw digital audio grab from the um, the digital video out might be a better approach um, or <laughs> we set a SID playing in the background on the Mega 65 and then use the um, digital audio channel loopback 
mechanism in the Mega 65 to extract it out. That's another way we can do it. Um, the other, the third way we could do it is actually to do it purely in simulation in the VHDL of actually, you know, run a SIB chip and do virtual pokes to the registers and simulate it running for a fraction of a second um, and get the exact uh, digital audio output from it. Um, yes, that's probably actually going to give the best result, right? Um, Hmm. I have to work out what I can actually do at half past nine at night when my brain is half fried. That's going to be the uh, the other half of this trick. Um, the other thing, <laughs> I'll just show you what we, we tried to do. Uh, wrong screen. In terms of, <laughs> before I thought about using the, uh, the speakers to get the thing, is... I got a, a crappy old phone headset and chopped off, you know, one of these uh, earbuds and put the oscilloscope probes on there. Um, and the problem for that is getting horrific 50 hertz pickup half the time, but the other half the time it wasn't, just to be frustrating. Um, it was probably giving a cleaner output than going through all of these, this extra kind of path. Um, how are we going to do it? How are we going to do it? This is uh, the question of the day, right? Or is that good enough? Because I suspect what we're going to find is that the um, the individual waveforms of the SID are probably going to be pretty close. But we can we can try and check that, right? Um, oh, Deft is pointing me to this SID test thing. Let me have a look at that because if that's a nice test program because what we want to do is to be able to play different waveforms at different frequencies on uh, different notes oh that's what's this thing doing to me i want to oh okay so def is saying that there are sids and recordings inside the 7z from there so let's Have a look at that. Let me grab it. Yeah, so by the way, that's right, you are hearing parallax through my mic because the normal audio path for it is not there. Uh, I'm playing it through the mic. Does it sound okay? It's probably a bit tinny, to be honest. Um, let me know if you prefer it being there or not being there. Um, and I'm happy to go either way. So what I'm going to do now, oops, right, FTP, where was it? FTP dot Untergrund.net What have we got here? M get star. That's what we want to do. I should have said prompt first, right? So I don't have to keep saying yes. But at least for change, we're all hearing parallax on the thing. Normally when I've got it through the regular uh, channel, you guys get to hear it beautifully and I don't get to hear anything. Um, so now we're all getting to hear it uh, tinny. It's true compromise, right? Nobody's completely happy. Hmm. 
Okay. Right. What's not on zip, it's seven Z T. Let's have a look and see what's in there. for a directory with dollar signs in it though um, okay so there's a SID for testing it with and then there's an audio in these other ones what I really want is just a, a quick and crappy program where you can say voice one uh, this waveform this frequency uh, if someone even wants to crock one up while we're typing that would be fabulous it can be in basic right so the, the way that we're you know, doing that with the play command is probably a large fraction of what we need um, the only trick is we can't get the the ground truth from a, a real SID uh, for that. But let's see. what might be more tractable is to try and debug some of that 8580 stuff. Hmm. I'm sure what's here is useful, um, but the, the lack of documentation on it is troublesome. Um, okay, so Luden's um, saying he could fetch the C64 power supply that he's got and test if that uh, still has good power and then he could try and get that C64 running. Yeah, because we need to have A64 running to be able to try and do uh, real comparison uh, of what we're getting out so that would be great to do and then what we need to do is to make uh, I think um, a simple test program in basic that does certain things with a SID uh, so that and we know exactly what it should be outputting uh, and then we can compare and make sure that it, it looks uh, good this okay so Let's have a look at a very simple Pardon me. SID programming. So we want, we should do this from C64 mode. And the reason being is that then when we want to test it on a real C64, the program will run on both. And we can have an identical program on both. Uh, this is probably going to take a little while. So I'm actually going to save your ears and we'll switch back to having uh, parallax via the real audio path. And I will make do without it. And what's that level looking like? I think that's looking okay hopefully you tell me if it's too quiet or uh, too loud so what we need is uh, play a note on SID C64 basic so lots of resources that will give us information on how to do this Right, so 
Oh, my desk. Working from home at the moment, as many of us are, right? Um, and so I've got, it's quite fun actually, we've got this really nice, uh, this uh, it's a really fancy uh, FPGA board. Um, it's about Australian dollars, four grand's worth or something. Um, software to find radio and stuff on there. Um, so I'm using that for work, but as you can see, it's sitting in very close proximity uh, to my Mega 65, which is uh, right at the moment annoying. Okay, now I can at least get to the Mega 65 keyboard and type. Um, so Tigris is saying, Wave Lab will provide 3D frequency analysis, three have to drop for lunch. Can you provide samples to compare? Yes, I think that's what we're gonna try and do. Uh, Luden says, nope, power supply is broken. It's only got four pins left in the DIN connector. Oops. Um, but maybe, well, once we have the test program, then somebody else can fairly readily uh, run it on a real C64 at some point. Uh, I'm not sure there's anyone else on channel that has a real C64 uh, handy there or prod someone on Discord. I'm sure we've got someone there on uh, on our Discord that would uh, have one. So, uh, 5427.6. Let's make a simple program that will do something right. So, we want to set the volume to full. Poke S plus 24,15. And the waveform. So that's S plus, oh, it's a 54272. Right. Poke S plus 4, and then we get to choose the waveform that we want. So triangle is. 16 and then we need to set the I'm looking at a thing on the net and it's just suggesting that we do this so this will be triangle equals 16 saw equals 32 I reckon it was Sawtooth that we were seeing just before. Uh, okay, and then we need to set the ADSR. So that's Poke S plus 5, comma. Feel free to, if someone who's more familiar with SID programming can um, give me cheat sheet information here. Right, so we want, so the attack is in the top half of S plus five. We want the attack to be really short so that it starts out loud. So that will be zero times 16 plus, and then we want the decay is in the bottom. The bigger the duration of this phase, the lower the volume level will end up with. So we can set that to zero and that should be a very short decay. Oops, and it's 50. So the sustain We want full, because we're just trying to make something that's going to be loud and clear. And then the release takes some time to fade. So we want that to be 15, I think. And 
and then we need S plus. There's an example of a. So we need to set the frequency for this now. And the high bike goes in there. Okay. Now we have to convert this. Right, so note C4 would be 7454. So the low bike goes in there, the high bike goes in there. Right. Now we need to do the gate bit. Okay. So voice one in the gate bit. When this bit is turned on, the attack decay sustain phases take place. Right. So I think what we need to do is poke S plus four comma waveform plus one. I think that should work. And I did hear something you might even be able to hear that yourself now. What an annoyingly high pitched tone. That's better, let's drop it another octave. Okay, so that's producing a waveform for us. And I'm just going to save that program. Okay, so I've got it saved out there now. Everyone's been very quiet on the, the chat there now. Um, so, 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 so. Oh, so. I guess we want to capture that. Uh, which means I need to rearrange all of that audio path again. Okay. Back to tinny audio, I'm afraid. oscilloscope probes out of the way so I can think. Uh, that's there, that's there. So 
So let's have a look at what Audacity has to say for itself. So we want to get rid of this one. Now what's going on here? That's what we're looking for. Okay. Hit record, hit run. And why are we not getting anything? Stop. Because we were getting stuff before. Ah, because it's suddenly decided. Is it? No. Stop. Delete. Record. Oh. <laughs> I have it plugged in the wrong hole. That looks better, doesn't it? Stop. Stop. Let's try that again. Right. So, you know, I've set the decay really long on this, right? So let's just have a look at that first bit. Okay. That looks like a waveform. So this should be the sawtooth waveform that looks sawtoothy to my totally uneducated everything. Um, so do we have, let me just see if there's anyone on Discord who has a real C64 handy. Does someone have a real C64 C128? set up right now that they would be able to do some audio recordings from for us yeah I'm definitely saying um, vice should be okay for now so if someone would like to do the recordings in vice ooh, I just found out we, we've got 946 people on our Discord server now as well. Uh, I don't know. Have I actually got a decent... I don't know whether I have. Oh, let's see whether I've got a, a decent version of Vice installed at the moment. No, it's crashing. Yes, right. And... and no worries, Dev understood that you're busy as well. Um, does someone else there on chat have um, Vice set up and be able to type in this program? And we'll probably do some modification of this program that will change the waveforms and things. So that we can try and do the, um, uh, the audio captures Let's, while we're here fiddling, right? So that was Sawtooth. This one will be Triangle. That looks triangular to me. Uh, 
Okay. So we have a mechanism by which we can do this and we can check the frequency at the same time from these. These will be quite easy to do frequency. Hmm. So one thing that we can try and do right now is if I combine the waveforms, um, so combining waveforms on a real 6581 SID causes problems. Um, there's a couple that can be used together, but most of them can't. So if I try to record, so I think triangle and um, sawtooth together is okay. It's one of the few that is. So we get this funny behavior. Now let me just check the SID register. SID. Because what I want to do is to check the waveforms and we might try one of the ones that should be silent on the 6581, but should come out okay on the 8580. So, there is noise, pulse, sawtooth, and triangle in those upper four bits of that byte. So if we do something like that, this should be effectively silent. Although interestingly, it's not, it's playing strange stuff. Um, sounds quite bizarre. So what I'm going to do is see whether the see what mode the um, SIDs are in. Yes, yeah, so I haven't got a, a Vice installation that's working on my laptop at the moment because I tried to recompile it and do strange things with it at some point. So, um, I'm just going to pause Parallax. So this is with Waveform 240. I don't know whether you can hear that. It sounds like a blowfly. And if we switch... Oh, okay, that's interesting. When I switch it to what I think is 8580 mode, it goes silent. Which I think actually means that the SIDs are defaulting to 8580 mode rather than 6581 mode. Um, so let me just see how I've got that. Blah, 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 blah. You know, so it should be mode is one, gets 8580 mode. I'm just looking at the, the VHDL here. Um, Hmm. Most curious. So either that or I've got just got the, the wavetables wrong for the um the Cinemot. I mean she's gonna make sure I'm running on the absolute latest bitstream because I only added support for the um the eighty five eighty combined waveforms quite recently. Um so what are we there? That's the mm, eighteenth of January, that should be fine, I think. Implement so and what one five D yeah no that that is the latest that is the head of the work to try and implement the eighty five eighty waveforms. Um because if we come and have a look in Sid Voice The 
the waveform selector. So we've got our things generating the waveforms. So where are they being used? Okay, so the signal mux we're saying is triangle bit 11. Okay, so in 6581 mode, it is oaring the bits together based on which ones are selected. Um, so that's why we're hearing something in 6581 mode. So that means the fact that it disappears in 8580 mode says that we have uh, a bug in the um, uh, so this is where it does the selection here. So when we have them all combined I know, it might just be that I chose the one totally illegal value <laughs> with the 8580 because I, I, I'm not a SID programmer. So I'm going to, but the fact that we heard it changed substantially. So I've just taken one bit off the end of it. And I will now go back to right. So with um, 6581, we have slightly different blowfly noise, and it's silent. With the other, so let's just. So 128 should be noise. And indeed it is. Oh, can you hear the difference? So that's me changing the SID mode. Um, and of course it's There's a difference in the noise. Um, right, so Sarada was saying triangle and square or sawtooth and square work. Right. So 50 should be valid, as should 96. Um, oh, how do you change the SID mode on the fly? So I'm setting FFD363C. I'm doing it from the serial monitor uh, in the background. Uh, so, but I can show you how I would do that from here. I'll just do it in this window. So this is just how I get the um, serial monitor because I'm slightly crazy. So if we go 363C, uh, so I'm just going to run it again. So we're currently in 8580 mode. And if I set that to zero, we can hear that change in the, um, the quality of the sound. Now, I'm not going to change that just yet. I'm just going to rerun it so that we go back to full volume. And we hear the difference. Between thing. Now there is something a little bit funny in that when I'm rerunning it, it's not always re-triggering the start of the note. So if I I'll show you what I mean. So I'm running it again and it's not going loud. But then sometimes it does. I don't know whether that's an actual bug. Uh, with the SID. I mean, 
presumably there's, there's something not right because that should just work um, let me just try um, and see whether that happens in 6581 mode as well whether there's a, a difference that they've implemented yeah so this is interesting so in 6581 mode it's always resetting the ADSR when we do that. But when we um, set that to, just so you can see what I'm doing here, right? So it's something screwball with 8580 mode, unless that's how an 8580 behaves. Again, I'm not a SID programmer, so I don't know. Um, so yeah, I think we're gonna have to try and track down uh, some of this stuff and figure out what's actually supposed to happen um, yeah we need a, a simple runnable PRG file that can run on a C64 um, that makes the SID do various things so that we can actually then record out um, a bunch of digital audio and then we can do the same on the Mega 65 and we know at which time points it's doing what and we can compare the output. I think this is that's going to be by far the best way. And yes, we can do it in Vice. Uh, I think that that would be totally reasonable for us to do it in Vice. Um, and so yeah, we're just going to need to actually write that somewhat more sophisticated uh, test program so that we can um, do that test, which unfortunately is not going to happen uh, right now. It's 10 o'clock at night here uh, and I'm uh, pretty trashed actually tonight. So, yeah. Uh, so LGB is saying something like, it sounds like white noise and then a low pass filter being used. Um, yeah, uh, it says, with our music sound SID diff, as am I as well. Um, so, yeah, uh, I, I can't help there either. And yeah, Luden, you're absolutely right. Vice is a good way to verify the process, but in the end we want to test against real hardware, which we should absolutely do. Uh, and a bunch of us have got means to get a, a PRG onto a um, a real C64 with a, a you know, using a Pi 1541 or a SDIEC or whatever. Um, I think that will be quite straightforward. So yeah, I think if we can do a bit of a, a team effort um, on this, that would be great to have something where we can actually just yeah really definitively compare things. Um, what I would say is that the test program should. Um, well, the, the first test program should be a single voice only. Uh, and the reason I say that uh, is that that will let us see the, uh, you know, the waveform of that voice on the thing. And if once we get that 100% right, then we can start having uh, multiple voice waveforms and comparing those uh, as well. So yeah, I think what we've worked out is uh, a path ahead uh, and that will be great and yeah look forward to seeing uh, progress on that but um, yeah I'm gonna hit the sack now um, if I wake up all enthused in the morning uh, we might have a, a look in eight or nine hours time um, but yeah if someone in the meantime wants to work on making a, um, uh, a simple program and it can just kind of be a variation of what I've got there in the basic right um, but you know testing different waveforms that uh, you know uh, waiting fixed amounts of time between them and those sorts of things that so would probably be better done in ASM to be honest because um, you could basically you'd have a raster interrupt right and go okay for 10 frames I'm going to play this note then the next 10 frames I'm going to play this note uh, and uh, yeah go through all the process and then we can validate the uh, uh, the behavior of it and see what is right or what is wrong um, and I'll also have a think about having some nice way to have a direct digital audio output because we have got this crazy capture over ethernet stuff that's used for different things uh, in there. Um, I could potentially make it so that we can actually push the audio stream digitally via ethernet. Um, that could be a really nice way to actually get high fidelity 
digital audio for doing this testing. I'll, I'll have a think about it um, while I wander off to bed. So, yeah. I think that's where we're at for the evening. Thanks for, for tuning in. And, yeah, looking forward to, to you know grinding this out and getting the, uh, uh, the seed stuff really good. Because once we've got that uh, mechanism for doing the comparison, then we're golden, right? Because we can go, right, okay, do we have a bug? You know, let's fix the bug. Uh, and work on it that way. Um, actually, thinking about it now, I'm actually leaning more to doing this with the simulation end because um, then we can just get the pure audio uh, out for it. Um, and with a bit of skullduggery, we could actually have multi-voice stuff and actually produce the um, uh, the waveform diagram oscilloscope kind of videos that folks have done with the SIDS um, directly that way as well. So, yeah. We might do it that way. So yeah, someone we need someone to write a program in ASM um, that should just have batches of registers that get set at particular time points, um, so that each set of register settings is a discrete audio test. Um, testing the eighty-five eighty re-triggering the voice would be good as well. Um, in so far as you know triggering uh, a note and then triggering another note and having it not come out properly on the mega 65 when it does on real hardware that would be great uh, for us to do but yeah if someone can cook up a test program uh, and i'll have a think about how we can make that test program work with the simulation because basically i won't actually run the real program um, i'll just pull out the um uh the SID register writes and the times, and I can stream them directly into that uh, at that point. But yeah, cool. Okie dokie. Once again, thanks for, for tuning in. Hope it's been uh, good. And um, all things well, we might catch us in a few hours or otherwise uh, when I can hop on next. Okay, take care, folks. See ya.